Hi friends! For those who are not familiar with what I do, I consider myself as an artist in the making. What I mean is that I slowly, bit by bit, reconnect to my creative side and I try to really embody it the best I can. And these channels help me dive into the wonderful possibilities of creation and humbly offer some inspiration. So today, that's what we're gonna do. Try something new. <laughs> that's it. Wait, this is better. I'm going to show a very small introduction of how the machine works. The machine is composed of a crank, a moving row full of pegs and dents. The crank moves the row, which mounted inside is an insert that makes the peg go up to catch the yarn thread, protruding from the guide, it's self-regulated by this yarn holder, which depending on how you fix the yarn helps maintain a homogeneous tension, whether high or low, throughout the project. We can choose to either make a tube or a panel. Casting on is super easy. You take the beginning of the thread that you will insert in the peg, then alternate between in and outs until you reach the desired width, the length being the number of rows you make. You insert the thread in the guide in the holder, go a bit further for the loop to be nicely done, then start going backwards while letting all the pegs capture the thread. When the end is reached, you should maintain the tension by gently pulling the start bit and repeat the process done earlier. And that's it! For casting off, also super simple. You pull out the thread from the guide and the holder, keep it up, then start cranking. This action will free the thread from the peg and will be the last stitch holding the project on the machine. You crank another round and your project is free to be used. I spent some time getting accustomed to the specificities and then I made a bunch of scarves for Christmas. Hi there, it's Miles from Post Production. I realized that I lost the footage showing you the quantity of scarves that I uh, was able to knit. So what I did is that I asked one of my family members to send me a picture of one of the scarves I made. And next to that, the family member put a pen ball so that you could see the length and have a bit in mind what happened. Anyway, back to life. Yep. And I suffered. So that led me to an idea. Why not automate the whole process of cranking? So only casting on and off. First things first, we need to make the machine move. And who says movement says engine. And for that, I have this. This is a stepper motor. Well, just discard that part. <laughs> and that will allow us to count the number of steps that the machine needs to do in order to count the number of pegs that I want to achieve. Basically, the baby steps that it takes will allow me to measure the distance. So I know that X steps will equal to a peg or multiple pegs, like the amount I want, basically. With that, I need to connect the motor to the machine itself. And what's really nice is that Centro has this, it's a crank adapter. So you just have to buy it along with the machine. And what it does is that it just goes over the crank and that bit is used to connect a power drill. How neat is that? I used it for the project to basically do that. You can totally discard that part. It was just easier to work with. And here for now, it's just a cut tube of any material. Here it's the typical plastic one to hold the pieces together. So that's it for the connection, that's all there is to it. And first I'm gonna put some books under to at least cover the distance between the machine itself and the ground to avoid applying too much pressure on the coupler here. The next step is for me to actually talk to the motor. So what I will need is a computer and that's what I got. This is an Arduino Mega, which is totally overkill for the project, like I just need these pins at most for it. It could power a mini robot or a 3D printer. Like, just too much. But with that, another thing to think about is if I connect the Arduino directly to the motor, it's gonna fry up. So what I need, like that's something I really need, is this. 
this is a step-in driver. It's gonna go in between the Arduino and the motor and that thing will do the heavy lifting, basically, because the motor in robotics is just a heavier piece to work with. And to finish, what I will need is just a cable to connect the Arduino to the PC and a power supply to just juice everything up. Now, I can pretend all I want that I'm an IT nerd because I know what part does what and this one and so on, but if I don't know a thing about programming, I'm not gonna go far at all. So, I'm gonna use a joker, and that joker is called Friend, aka ChatGPT. Uh huh. Okay. Are you sure? Anyway, now. It was a moment of truth. Yes. Now that we have everything we need, it's time to mount everything together. And honestly, I was quite baffled because I thought it would be easy. I had the software that would work. Well, it's already a victory in itself. And I had the parts, I was like, what could go wrong? If my software works, the rest would follow. No? How wrong I was. I was wrong. Engineering itself is, I wouldn't say complicated, but you have to understand things and what's really hard to deal, complex to deal with, is that you can't have feedback. You, you can't, like, you have to understand that doesn't work, why? That too, why, what's happening? Did one of my threads just burn? Do I have enough power to provide to all this machinery? Well, machinery, you get what I mean. So that was pretty interesting itself. So to run a bit through the process of what happened, we had to mount the NEMA 17 motor on the crank. But the problem is that I'm starting with putting some post-it notes. Well, good idea, but the motor itself has strength. That means that it's great, but the NEMA needed to be enclosed in something because just over time it would move from the tower and just jump off the mechanism. So no bueno. I ended up finding a chug of water, I deflated it a bit and I used some hot glue which became my best friend for all creative projects because it's so easy you just heat it up and when you don't need it anymore you can just scrap it off no mess it's great <laughs> so with that the driver the driver burnt at some point because i kind of did a shortage the program i've made wouldn't go well i had some troubles with the pins it just wouldn't implement the things I wanted. I also had problems with the library I chose. Anyway, if you're interested, I could dive deeper into that and I'll make another video. So tell me in the comments. Then after that, I had to change also the motor because the one I had previously wasn't strong enough to support all the way the cranking from beginning to finish of the project. All of these steps and in the end did it work let's see You can't imagine how happy, excited I was. I would just see it going around like back and forth. I was like, yes, yes, I did it. Well, with some help, of course, I did it. But it was great, great feeling knowing that I could just 
pick up a project and just have no boundaries. I could just do it. That was really nice. <laughs> and now I can crank without being there on the machine. That's all I wanted. So two lessons I can really take out from this whole thing is to never give up and ask help when you need it. It's okay to ask for help. That's it. Thank you very much for staying until the very end. I really hope that you'll pick up on knitting or even crocheting and that I just started to spark to try something new. See you next time. Stay inspired. <laughs>